It is Friday, April 30th, 2010, and welcome to This Week in Linux. I'll go ahead and apologize in advance if I sound a little bit odd. I had this side of my face numbed earlier because I had to have a cavity filled. The big news today is that Ubuntu 10.04 officially released yesterday, Thursday, April 29th. Just in case you haven't been watching the development of Ubuntu 10.04, there are several new features to it. They've got an entire new interface called Light. They've got a couple of new themes, radiance, and ambience. Most notably, they've moved the window controls from the right-hand side to the left-hand side, so if you want to close a window, don't go up to the right, go to the left. They've got some new icons, some new startup and login screens, some new backgrounds, some stuff you'll see in new releases every time. But as far as changes go, they've actually added a new scanning program, they've added the PTV video editor, they removed GIMP from the default install, they added Gwibber to the default install, and integrated it into the Me menu up in the upper right hand corner. They've got iPhone and iPod Touch support out of the box. I've actually demonstrated this in an earlier video, I will put a link to that down here in the corner. All systems of course come with Ubuntu One now, which integrates with the Ubuntu One Music Store, which is a part of Rhythmbox. I made a video demonstrating that earlier, I'll put a link to that over there inside too. This actually comes with the latest version of Gnome in it as well, which has the split window view in Nautilus, so you can actually look at two things at the same time. All in all, a very interesting release, I've been using it since since beta 1 and it runs very smoothly. In other news, Mark Shuttleworth announced on his blog that when Ubuntu 10.10 comes out, there's going to be a new feature for the Netbook Edition. It's going to be coming with a global menu. What's a global menu, you might ask? I was asking the same thing. I'm going to facepalm here for a second, but think Mac OS X. It's got the main menu in the upper left-hand corner with all your applications in it, but they're taking the menu bar out of the applications and actually putting it into the top bar just like Mac does. When you open a new application, rather than having the menu bar at the top of the application, it will be at the top of the screen instead. This will also be available in the Desktop Edition, and they're looking for people to test it out. Moving right along, the creators of the X264 video codec have announced that they've created the first free software Blu-ray encoder. The compression that you get with the X264 codec is so good, they're actually able to compress to Blu-ray format now. To give you an example of this new encoder, they've created a demo Blu-ray that you can download and burn for yourself. On that Blu-ray are copies of Big Buck Bunny and Elephant Stream from the Open Movie Project. With this, they also mention that it's possible to convert a Blu-ray down to DVD-9 or DVD-5 size with a reasonable quality level. And now, in Yeah We Saw It Coming news, there's a class action lawsuit being filed against Sony for removing Linux from the PS3. Basically, as a part of the lawsuit, they're stating that Sony has removed advertised functionality from the PS3 and they're ripping off their customers. In virtualization news, VirtualBox 3.2.0 Beta 1 has been released. As a part of the release, they're actually renaming the product. They've called it Oracle VM VirtualBox now to celebrate the fact that they're now owned by Oracle. With this new version is coming experimental support for Mac OS X guests, CPU hot plugging for Linux and some Windows systems, multi-monitor support, which is very cool, USB tablet and keyboard emulation, and they fixed a whole slew of bugs. In other news, Linux.com has announced the finalists for their t-shirt contest they were having. I'll put a link to that, of course, in the show notes. And finally, ATI has released version 10.4 of the Catalyst driver for Linux. This supports up through Xorg version 7.5, so it should work on all modern versions of Linux. There are a couple of little tweaks you might have to do on some other versions, but I will put a link to that in the show notes. The drivers are available for both 32- and 64-bit Linux systems. And that's all the news I've got for you today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.